Hey everyone, so today I've gone and picked up a parcel and it is the Black Fencer Sparring Simulator Synthetic Swords. So that's a, a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Well, we'll be unboxing this today, so let's see how it goes. Alrighty, so a bit of a disclaimer, I bought this with my own money and, you know, it's not been sent to me, there's been no favouritism from Black Fencer towards me. The other thing is that I've had, you know, a dozen not so great phone calls with FedEx in the shipping, so if anything there's probably a bit of a negative bias on this unboxing and review. The other thing is that when, um, when they were being sent, then they got the handle colours wrong and they, assu they assured me that they would fix it, so hopefully they have fixed that. They didn't send photos to confirm, so we'll see today. Anyway, without further ado, then let's, uh, let's unbox this. So before I show you the product, then let's talk a little bit about Black Fence's Sharp Simulator line. So their Sharp Simulator aims to replicate the sparring effect of two sharp swords. And what I mean by that is that two sharp swords, when you hit edge on edge, will bite into each other. Now, if you've never sparred with sharp swords before, it's probably because you're safe, and that's probably a good thing. And I can't say that I've ever sh sparred with sharp swords before. But I have gotten two small knives and put the edges together, and seeing with different amounts of force, they bite into each other, and they don't really let you slide past each other. And if you sparred with, you know, shinai or synthetic swords, then they tend to slide past each other very, very easily. And at lower levels, with just striking, it's, it's fine, there's no real problem. But at higher levels where you want to control your opponent's blade, then it becomes a bit difficult because they're too slippery. So Black Fence's Sharp Simulator aims to do this with edge-on-edge -edge contact, but it's designed so that when you go edge-on-flat on your opponent's sword, it'll still slide past, as real blades would do. So we've bought three swords from them because shipping was, to Australia was nightmarishly expensive. So it, it really only made sense to buy three swords because if we had any less than that, it was just way too expensive. So we've got two custom katanas and one custom, we, we ordered a Miao but it's actually, it's actually supposed to be the Jedok Gum, which is you know, from the style that I practice. And I'll do another video talking about that with a full review about the Sharp Simulator line. But let's have a look at what we've got. So, these two are our custom katanas, and if you have a look, you can see that they are very toothed, and that's exactly what I'm talking about with the Sharp Simulator. Now, they, they originally wrapped them all in this light brown material, which is the cheapest option, and I wanted one of them with that, and the others not with that, and I'm glad that they fixed that. So as you can see with these two swords, if I put them edge on edge, then they bite into each other and then they stick and they, you can't really slide past each other very well. But if I turn one to the flat, then it just glides past, no problems. And so then that's how they emulate sharp swords fighting against each other. So let's talk about a few of the features that I got with this. Um, the first is that it's not a katana length. When we spar, we spar using shinai because we don't really practice Japanese swordsmanship. We practice jerokum and they have slightly longer swords. So these have an 87 centimeter long blade length and a 33 centimeter long handle. And it looks just about right to me. That, that looks and feels how I would expect it to. The handling on this, it's a little bit forward heavy. It, it feels like a katana cutting and the, I think they've got the shape quite nicely down to profile as well. Now the other thing that you'll see with us sparring is we use modified kendo men, so they've got bars rather than a mesh. And so they've kept the tip quite fat for us so that the, the tip definitely can't fit through those bars. So it's just a bit of a safety measure. If I grab this kendo men here, you can see even horizontally, it just can't go through. So that was a really nice feature that Black Fencer put, on, put in for us free of charge. Now having a look at this, then one thing that jumps out to me is that the workmanship of the spikes, uh, well the teeth if you will, is, I mean, the, the, they're accurate, but they're not very well finished. You know, there's quite a lot of rough lines here and there's a little bit of nylon fluff from when it's been processed. So I think I'll have to take to it with some sandpaper just to clean that up, just so it looks a little bit nicer. 
Now the finish on the wrap is quite nice and they've actually got if, what, what feels like a metal guard. So that's pretty cool. You know, you don't really see a disc guard for one in many synthetic sparring swords, let alone one that's made of solid metal. And you know, this will really protect your hands quite well from cuts coming in this way. It feels nice to hold in the hands. Grip size is good. Weighting feels good. I mean, no real complaints. We'll see how it goes in sparring when we get there. And like I said, then they've, uh, they've tried to copy the katana um, shape. So they've got uh, a shaped mune on the spine as well. Now, I suppose it did just occur to me that, you know, these are the perfect swords if I wanted to make the, the best Demon Slayer Inosuke cosplay. You know, their teeth, they are aggressive and they look fantastic. So, I mean, apart from the handle wrap being slightly different, but... Um, yeah, this would be a perfect cosplay for it. Not my intention, but uh, an interesting side effect that comes to mind. Now we can also get onto the Jerokum, which is supposed to be made in the proportions of Admiral Lee Rusong's blade, which was quite huge. So if I put the tip on the ground, you can see it comes up really quite high. You know, this is a, it's got a 102 centimeter blade length with a 36, 37 centimeter handle length, something like that. And so this is supposed to be a re recreation of Admiral Lee Rusong's sword based on the historical documents of the measurements from his sword. And you can see it's got very little curvature to it. Um, and it's, it's based off a uh, Chinese Miao Dao. Though back in those, in the Ming Dynasty, I think it was more likely called a Chang Dao. So this looks really impressive and in the hands, you know, it feels quite nice to swing. And I think this will be a lot of fun to train and spar with. It is actually quite whoppingly big. This one also has safety tip. I mean, in terms of profile, it's almost identical to the, um, to the modified katanas. Same discard, same cord handle wrap, quite nicely done. And I think that they've put some sort of glue or something over the handle wrap to, to make it more durable. And this is, uh, it's, not, it's not particularly heavy and it handles quite nicely. Got quite a bit of forward cutting prowess. And you can see that the point of balance is, or oh, maybe, you know, 15 centimeters away from the guard for a 102 centimeter long blade, which is quite good. I quite like that. Again, then the teeth um, just need a little bit of cleaning up with some sandpaper. So I'll do that in my spare time. Now in terms of durability, then you know, these feel quite durable and apparently synthetic swords are incredibly hard to break. So not having owned any synthetic swords previously, I guess we will test that claim. They have got a bit of flex, which is nice. So you can see that it flexes a little bit. It's not particularly floppy as, a, as an Asian Dao shouldn't be. Um, so it replicates it quite well, but it's still safe in the thrust, which was one of the big problems with the Shinai. Shinai just don't flex in a thrust. And so then getting stabbed anywhere but the mask with the Shinai was really quite painful. So I think that this will be hopefully a little bit nicer, though I do have some concerns about those teeth. I mean, I think they might dig in a little bit more than if it were just a flat synthetic sparring blade, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, they don't seem too pronounced and there is still quite a fair amount of contact on surfaces. It's not like these are particularly sharp. So now we get down to the, the big bucks question, the bottom line, how much did these cost? So each of these individually, then they cost less than 100 euros, including 15 euros for the Sharp Simulator. So in Australian dollars, that's about $150, which is quite pricey, but to get a sparring sword in the Asian variety, you know, it's, it's a pretty niche market, so it's to be expected. Now what really broke my back was shipping. I had to pay 160 euros for these to be shipped to Australia and FedEx says, you know, one to three business days for International Priority Express and it took more than a week. So I was not very happy with FedEx and had many calls with them and in the end, I, as soon as they went to Australia, I drove over to the FedEx collection site just to pick it up because I just didn't want to wait any longer for them because it was getting quite ridiculous. So in terms of cost, the swords themselves are quite reasonably priced. 
the shipping and the service with FedEx was not. So in terms of the product itself though, then handle wrap, feel, how, it's, how it moves, feels really good and feels really nice. It's just the fit and finish of it is just leaves a little bit to be, to be desired. So, you know, there's a few rough spots on the, on the nylon when you run your fingers down and there's just, the, the teeth are quite harshly milled. There's just a lot that needs to be cleaned up here with some sandpaper. And, you know, for a product that costs 150 Australian dollars, then um, I would expect a little bit more fit, a little bit better finish on this compared to what we've got here. I don't think it affects how the product handles and it's used, but it, it would just be nice to have because I think it would look a little bit nicer. So this is just an, a quick unboxing. So we will spar with these for a few weeks and we'll come back with a full review and I'll use that as an opportunity to talk more about the Jedokum and Admiral Lee Rusong's blade in that time. So I hope you like seeing these and I hope you're as excited to see how these go inspiring as I am. And with that, I'll see you next time.